So, hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's trading spotlight webinar here together with Admirals. It's Friday. It's uh, the 22nd of April 2022. And today we want to dig deeper into the rise of the machines, high frequency trading, give some insights into it, which strategies the HFTs uh, from today use. Um, also give some, some uh, details on the used lingo in this context. So they have a very uh, yeah, quant related language they use. And um, when you come across some of the uh, um, um, wording here, like um, momentum ignition or something like that, or rebate uh, trading, then uh, probably you're interested in uh, understanding what this means and how this works. And this is exactly what we want to dig deeper into. And also, um, so most of the time uh, you will uh, think about um, how can I, especially if I'm, I'm trading the, the shorter time frame, how can I profit uh, in, in these markets if I have to fight, let's say, against machines which um, trade faster then I can blink with an eye. And, and is, there, is there a chance to, to profit from this? Um, so one, one chance is to step back and then to probably um, a trade, especially assets um, in this case, where um, the, the moves you get to see are real and they are not um, so-called fake moves. But this means this also topic of today's webinar. Um, but also, uh, you can, um, even though you, you, you have not really much of a chance, let's say, you can use some techniques um, um, here to then profit from, from uh, moves which might be initiated from um, HFTs and profit, especially um, um, from them, because you are trading way smaller um, as a retail trader, as uh, the big boys, the big institutions in this context, and how this works. This is also a topic of today's webinar. Um, so if you watch this on YouTube now, the recording um, here, then don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Leave a comment if you like what you see. If you have any questions, leave a thumb up here if you like what you get to see now. And um, you know, let's, let's, let's get it started. Let's share my screen first. And then also, let's just have a look here. Yeah, everything fine. So the chat box there, you can ask all your questions. Hello, traders. If you have any, and those witnessing this now live here, Please feel free to ask your questions then um, here in the, the chat box. So today, again, as I already pointed out, this is, this is what we want to look here into before we start officially with the agenda and uh, the um, 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 topic, respectfully, everything around this topic. First of all, I'd like to introduce Admirals to you here, uh, the broker behind this webinar series, the broker which makes all this possible, um, an FX and CFD broker with over 8,000 financial instruments being offered and um, having a global presence, fully regulated from SISEC, from the FCA, from the ASIC in Australia, also from um, um, the regulatory body in Jordan. So this is now a new regulatory body overseeing the business here from Atmos. What this means, you can find all details um, here on the website, respectively, reach out to Admirals. I'll give you some uh, contact details here to reach out to at the end of this webinar. I'm very competitive when it comes to DAX trading. So over here, I'm located in Berlin, in Germany. We usually refer to Admirals as the so-called DAX expert or um, 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 broker. You definitely have to have a deeper look at or into um, once you plan to trade the DAX due to the uh, very competitive offering here with one point um, spread, but also very competitive um, offering in terms of order execution, speed, reliability. So definitely worth a deeper look, but not just only the DAX, also the FX um, offering here. Check out the website, admiralmarkets.com for further details. Um, right now, you will come across the following here, the um, one offering, which is currently um, very interesting, especially for active traders. Um, those um, who try to profit from not just volatility, but also a trade um, 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 on a larger scale, especially on large, not in terms of position size, but especially more active. So there is right now a uh, cashback offering. Um, and this is some um, um, what you will find under the Admiral's trade days. So therefore check out the website for all get to get all the information and details around this. So fully regulated broker offices around the globe, one world, one broker in this context. So again, 
one broker you should definitely have on your watch list if you're not already trading with Atmos. If you're interested in uh, the offering here, um, then check out the website. And now let's dig deeper into today's topic and today's agenda. So three points I, I um, have here. So how does high frequency trading work? Um, we will dig deeper into um, some of the um, um, techniques they use. We will dig deeper, as I already pointed out, into the lingo they use. Um, I will show you some strategies. Um, the so-called flash boys use um, flash boys. This is a, um, a wording I um, um, lent from a book, a very, very good book on this topic. In a few seconds, we will learn which one. And um, then also um, we want to answer the question on how this affects smaller traders as we are retail traders and um, what we can do about this and how we can profit from this. Before we then start, first of all, here are two books I'd like to recommend. If you want to learn more about this topic, I highly recommend reading these two books. I have them both here. So um, I have them. Can you see this? Oh, no, this is not. Can you see this here? There. Uh, so this is the um, 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 Broken Markets book. Um, and here is the Flash Boys book from, can you see this? Oh, let me just see. There. Uh, uh, there you have it. Oh, you can see it. So um, <laughs> however, um, so um, I read both books. There's um, also other books, um, I think, from Scott Patterson, if I'm not mistaken. It is um, uh, The Quants, if I'm not um, mistaken. I think this is the name of the book. I, I have it in, in uh, uh, on the shelf here, but um, I, I'm not really sure about the name. These two are definitely worth your time. So if you're interested, then check out these two books. Find them on Amazon. Flash Boys, obviously, this is where I have the name from. Um, a book which, um, uh, yeah, made rounds, respectively, um, um, uh, um, had had a nice buzz around um, that was uh, around 2010, 2011, if I'm not mistaken, 2014. Not really sure, but um, the, um, 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 the, 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 um, the reason for this book um, is found in uh, some, some um, 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 yeah, well, how can we say that? Um, um, there were traders who found out that something's going wrong there or something's going on there and, and then they, uh, they, they dug deeper and, and they tried to find out what's, um, what's going on there and then found out about um, HFTs and that was then the starting point of um, some, 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 some deeper research and right now probably um, HFTs have somehow lost some of their momentum. It's not that they're not um, trading anymore, but and given the um, edge, which became smaller and smaller, regulatory reasons, um, uh, the, the cost of doing business here and capitalizing on the, um, on the, on the um, 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 yeah, edge they had during that time, um, made, makes it very, very difficult today to trade profitably based on um, 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 high frequency trading. But still, um, you should know about this. And this is exactly what this webinar today is here for. Um, so, okay, perfect. Um, so let's start, let's start here with uh, the first question on this topic. So the first question is how does high frequency trading or HFT short works? And um, so what we can say is that HFT, so high frequency trading, um, is complex algorithmic trading in which large numbers of orders are executed within seconds, sometimes milliseconds, really. So like blinking with an eye and you have um, 100 orders. Um, and it's very difficult to, um, if you're not an expert on this, it's very difficult to, to, to understand what's going on there, respectively, um, to have enough manpower to see um, not just how HFTs work, but also which um, 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 techniques they use, respectively, um, how this might um, break laws you, 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 you have um, um, when trading a stock exchange, for example. And um, HFTs usually um, are pointed out and they say, well, this is great because HFTs and, and, and the, the quickness which, with which they work and they shoot orders into the order book. Well, usually this is something which is positive because it adds liquidity here to the markets and eliminates some um, um, small bid ask spreads, for example. Um, and the thing is, and, and you can see it here already, uh, it says it adds liquidity. The thing is, um, that this is not necessarily the case. So it could be that the orders, or most of the time it is, that the orders are so quick 
in and out of the market that you're not capable of trading on the um, 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 on these but they are more like uh, like 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 uh, they use a technique which is called paying so they they try to um, find out whether there is a small buyer or seller or try to ignite um, for example a momentum on the up or in the downside and then try to profit from the resulting um, um, a move um, on the up or on the downside without really um, trying to to uh, make trading more efficient in this case or more let's say um, cheaper for 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 smaller ones but uh, it seems as if they add liquidity but it's not liquidity um, which you really can trade on and uh, the pr two primary um, criticisms here of HFTs are uh, that it allows especially institutional players to gain an upper hand in trading because they can trade large blocks through the use of algorithms um, and also second as I already pointed out, this liquidity is um, in fact fake liquidity because it appears and disappears here um, um, so quick that it's really um, impossible for especially us as retail traders here to take advantage of it. Um, and this this is um, especially something which um, um, yeah which, which um, um, resulted in some some deeper research, especially from regulatory bodies here, um, with the help of some some experts, and which made it more and more and more difficult here to uh, for HFTs here to 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 profit um, on well let's say um, um, on behalf of, of the of the um, um, retail trader especially but also the retail trader not necessarily but also other institutional traders like um, big funds for example who use them um, 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 techniques like we web strategies for example so let's assume the following you you say well i go to um, um, a bank as does your friend or as does many many others too and um so the bank then offers a certain product like they say hey um i we'd like where we we um, um we we say invest some of your funds probably let's say 100,000 euros into um, um a broader market index like um msci world fund or something like that an etf and um so then you have sometimes 100 million or something um in in liquidity which you forward to uh, the fund manager in this case, or respectively, uh, yeah, the ETF um, 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 fund manager, let's say. And um, they, what they do with the money is uh, they, they buy. But now the thing is, um, it's not just, just buy, but um, if, if they have lots and millions here, in this context um, of, of um, 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 funds, they have to buy the ETF with, well, what's a good price? So how do you find out what's a good price? And, and therefore, um, you could say, well, we use a volume weighted average price. And based on that, for example, our trader, the, the, the guy who executes the order then, um, is um, and, and his performance is measured in comparison to what the market traded on average here and the volume it traded on which price. So if you buy better than this volume weighted average price, he receives some um, a bonus because let's say the volume weighted average price is ten and and you were capable of buying um, um, the volume or, or bringing the volume to the market here and buy for your clients at nine. There's a difference of one. You executed better and based on this one dollar better, you get your bonus. If you you paid more, um, like say VWAP is 10 and then you buy at let's say 11, well, you bought worse. Now the thing is that these HFTs, um, they know the technique of, of buying in comparison to WeWeb, for example, and then they um, um, program algorithms to try to profit from um, um, WeWeb here. And therefore, um, they then sometimes um, um, buy in front of WeWeb, for example, because they know there's a big buyer. Um, they find this out by, by shooting orders very quickly, even though only small pieces. And I say, well, oh, there's, there, there, there is a, um, um, let's call it a bigger iceberg. We can call this, for example. Um, 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 and, 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 and then you say, well, obviously there's a big buyer which has to buy um, based on certain algorithms and, 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 and certain behavior patterns, which you can find out. Um, um, and then you, you ping the market, you see, well, there's a buyer, and then I buy in front of this, this, this um, 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 big order in this context and know that this buyer will continue to buy higher. And I'm capable, in, in, in the, the, since I, I buy in front of him, to, to, to um, um, offer the bought pieces to him at a higher price, which is then, even though it's just a small 
small difference, but it adds up over time. And then meaning that the ETF fund manager is buying at a worse price than he usually would buy, um, which means then the um, guy, the investor, us, is paying a higher price. So this is a very rough way to, 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 to understand um, um, how this um, 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 results in a worse price here for, for retail traders in, in, for example, when it comes to investing um, and, and how to understand this. And we will dig deeper into this a little later, but first of all, we wanna start here with a little HFT lingo. So the language um, you will come across in this um, context um, um, when it when it when it comes to to high frequency trading, um, this is an interesting question. So, is this when we see those big spikes um, in, in in forex, for example? HFTs are also um, I'm trading in forex, but um, it depends a little. Um, so, it could be that that the big spikes occur due to news events, for example, and uh, market participants, real true um, um, FX players, for example, taking out. Um, 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 the liquidity out of the market and they take it out because they are not certain of what event um, 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 or no, what, 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 re what result or in which direction um, um, a big macro event will be interpreted to. So for example, um, if you look at, at the Fed announcement or if you look at non-farm payrolls, for example, ECB, um, you sometimes see spikes on the up and downside. And um, so what market put is short before this event occurs, let's take non-farm payrolls and we have them at 2.30 German time, so 1.30 London time, um, and, and, and you see five seconds before the event comes um, 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 to the market, no one really knows, will it be better than expected, worse than expected, how will the market react? Well, what will happen is that market participants who are not really sure will take out the liquidity of the market, respectively, they say, I'm not buying here and I'm not selling there, which will then naturally result in the widening of spreads, but still there are some market participants um, who work with, with market orders and that then execute it. And this is resulting in spikes higher and lower. And then um, um, you see, see some, some sharp candles on the up or downside. But also it could be, this is also a possible, sometimes you get to see some, some, yeah, well, we could probably call this stuff. That's probably a good way to put it. Um, but very, very short term. Um, so that, that, that might be that, um, um, for example, you um, have a very strong zone of resistance, um, um, higher, for example, let's, is there an example I can think about right now? Well, I'm not sure, probably, um, let me just see. Um, yeah, probably. Well, you can see it in the pre-market now. So I have a, I have a screen here. I have the spider open. So this is the ETF on the S and P five hundred, um, and and we have probably a, a solid region of of, of resistance here around um, four hundred and, and thirty eight. So. Given that, it could be uh, that now we get to see a spike higher um, and, and that there are probably some, some um, um, HFTs who try to push the market higher. So they ignite some kind of move which pushes into this level, but it's um, um, a move where you don't see a step up of the bids, but you see a spike higher. Um, and then you, you see the order filled, the market order being filled, but it's not a sustainable move. So you see the spike higher and then we're sold immediately back lower. And the guys who are getting stopped out there or who are shorting um, in this area, um, in this case, the, 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 um, or those going, going long, especially in this area, um, they say, okay, I'm, I'm caught on the wrong foot. I have to buy back and they buy back lower. And this is then most of the time HFTs who are giving um, um, them the, 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 the um, um, other side of the trade selling there. So um, we're respectively buying, buying um, for them selling back at this time um, and thus booking a profit. So this could be um, one of the reasons. We will look into this um, um, in, in, in two slides um, and I give you an idea here. So you, you can see um, it's not that easy to understand, let's say, but definitely worth um, um, thinking about a little um, and, and taking this into account. So it's a very, very good question. But first of all, let's start with um, some, some HFT lingo. So some language here. So first of all, you probably have heard about this. Um, also, when, when, um, um, when you came across a virtual private server on the website from Admirals here um, and co-location. So virtual private server, um, all information can be found on the website, but this is something um, where you can, it's, it's kind of a remote 
computer which which runs all the time and which you uh, don't shut down as you shut down your laptop for example which is very um, um good in terms of when you work with expert advisors for example and then um you um, um, um here expert advisors in this case um if you shut down the meta trader your your um, expert advisor will not get executed anymore that means if you have an expert advisor which runs all the time and, and needs to run all the time, you usually work with such a virtual private server. So then um, the thing is, what you want to know or what you want to have is a, is a, um, um, a VPS, which is very close to the liquidity provider um, and, and thus have a very small difference here um, in terms of, of location. Um, you want to be co-located, if you want, directly to uh, the order um, server here from the liquidity provider um, because the, the, um, um, the nearer you are to the liquidity provider, um, the, the faster you should expect your order to be executed, which is especially important if you trade um, in and out within seconds. And so this is then already where you can understand what co-location means. If you come across this, um, it's, a, it's a big plus. If you, if you have um, a VPS co-located here, in fact, when using expert advisors, algorithmic um, um, use here in, in your trading. So it's um, in case of HFTs, co-location means that you're locating HFT computers in the same premises where an exchange computers server is housed. So, um, for example, for millions of USD, just to access um, stock prices a split second before the rest and just the privilege of so-called low latency access. So this is perfect um, um, to understand now when you see, for example, um, some, uh, yeah, how, how can we say, some, 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 some memes probably on Twitter, social media or something, um, where you have someone like, like Zero Hatch, so this is probably a good way, but also others posting pictures and saying here, um, this is how a retail trade, especially when, when markets are getting volatile and you get panicky moves on the up and down side. Um, this is then um, um, when, when you say, well, you see market participants right now freaking out and then you see just some computers there um, and, and just blinking. So it's, there's nothing happening. It's just the computers executing the orders. Um, and this is what they mean by that. So they what, what they do is they um, post a picture from these um, um, from these areas where these computers are located. And um, they are located directly to the servers from the stock exchange. And it also explains, for example, why the old NYSE um, um, building occupied um, here only only 46,000 um, square feet, while the new NYSE Euronext data center, which is um, located in Mawa, New Jersey, here, um, has um, um, is, is occupying here 398,000 square feet. So way bigger because all these computers are, are located there and you have to pay millions, millions and millions of, of USD just to be, to be part here and being directly located to the liquidity provider. So first of all, um, so this comes down to the next very important um, 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 word you have to know once you talk about HFTs here, so-called latency. So which um, in latency, I think many of us already know what this means. So it's the time that elapses from the moment a signal is sent to its recipient. So um, since lower latency equals to faster speed, so the more, the closer you're located um, um, to the, the server where your order um, is executed or where, where your order is, is, is shot to, um, so the, the, the better in this case. So high frequency traders spend heavily here um, to obtain, uh, obtain not just the fastest computer um, hardware and software and data lines, um, but also best location here so um, that they can execute their orders as speedily as possible and gain a competitive edge in their trading in this code. Context. And then there is this, this tactic of pinging. Before we dig deeper into pinging, first of all, I have to right now write down some data here for my trading for today, for US equities trading. Um, so you've probably seen yesterday the comments from, from Jay Powell and uh, um, 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 the very bearish reaction here in this context and uh, the very bearish close. So today could be a very interesting day, in fact, for... Um, um, for us, because um, if we continue to trade lower, we could see a very weekly, weak weekly close. And in this context, okay, there's something I have to look up here. Um, and uh, so today, for example, it's not that I'm focusing here on um, single shares, 
but more I'm focusing on marketplace. So um, um, NASDAQ, respectively, also the, the queues, for example, um, Spider. And uh, so this is, this is something you should probably take into account for today. And let me just here at oh, it's 1.6 million in the queues which were traded. Probably there is um, 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 a chance today to, to, to trade something um, which could be hot, even though I'm a little disappointed, in fact, when I, when I watch Snap. So yesterday they, they saw um, earnings and they, the guidance wasn't that good. But right now it's not that, it, um, um, that, we, that we get to see um, lots of volume being traded here in the pre-market, which is kind of surprising. In fact, it's only 1.5 million shares and only 1.5 million shares because usually we trade close to 37 million on average per day. And, and so this is not that, not that interesting. So probably, especially marketplace are of interest. But um, now let's come back here. Let's come back here to uh, to the presentation and pinging in this case. So what is pinging? So it's a tactic of entering small marketable orders. So like small orders where we say, well, this is our lot size and, and, and 100 shares, trading 100 shares, for example, this is already quite big. Um, but in case of um, if, you, if you're if you trading with billions of USD, 100 shares is nothing. It's just like you, you shoot the order into the market and then um, what, why you do this? It's, it's very simple. You do this with a target, in fact, to learn about large hidden orders, for especially in dark pools here, um, or exchanges. So, well, you can imagine that. It um, sounds kind of um, abstract, but you can imagine that um, to work like similar to, to a submarine, for example, which sends out so-called sonar signals um, to detect upcoming obstructions or enemy vessels, for example. So this is, this is the same concept. And this is um, what HFTs do, um, and, and where sometimes you then get a, a cascade of orders, which is not a real true move, but it's just um, a cascade resulting out of, of, of the market here, um, 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 triggering some stops on the up or downside, and then you get these spiky moves, which are not really true moves, which is very, very, um, um, yeah, um, how can I say that? Um, ugly, let's say. So um, let's assume you, you say, well, I'm entering now, I'm long, um, and I expect the market to push higher. You have the stop, and then you see the flush out on the downside and a quick rebit. While you work with a hard stop, having your stop right below the low of the day, you see the, your order getting filled, you're getting stopped out, and the market then reverses sharply and pushes higher. And this could be initiated from HFTs. So what can you do about this? Well, sometimes just swallow it, that's um, one way to do that. Another, but very um, difficult um, um, technique in this context could be, and you have to be really sophisticated in this context, it's really advanced. And, and even advanced traders are not necessarily a big fan of that. It's like you have to sit in front of the screen and really observe the price action. And, um, and, and then you have also to have access to, to the tape here, to the order book and really see if this is a true real move or it's a move um, um, which is just a, a fake move in this context. So especially if you're trading, and this is one of the reasons you, you can come back now to what I just said about Snap, that it's not that hot today, even though we had earnings yesterday after close, after the market closed, um, usually you expect the, the stock to be hot. You really expect here in this context um, 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 to, to, um, to see more volume. Um, and if you see this volume, you usually expect the moves to be true. It's um, different from a market environment, let's say, which is quite shallow. Um, that's probably a good way to put it. And, and where HFTs um, can play their games. Um, in, a, in a market environment where you see true moves, so where you really see a push to new highs or volume pouring in right into the market opening and then markets um, I'm seeing a strong opening drive on the upside, on the downside, um, you usually um, don't want to, or you don't expect HFTs to really play their games because um, this is an environment where these HFTs are, well, they, 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 they face the risk of being run over. And um, this is usually an environment in which you don't want to want to want to trade with which HFTs. Usually this is also true when it comes to volatility, um, um, especially if volatility picks up. Usually what you try to avoid is um, let a HFT run where you see the sometimes non-existent liquidity um, dry out even further because these um, um, HFTs are not that present in the market as, as they used to be, um, which sometimes results then in, um, how can we say that? Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm a very, very um, um, 
it looks like a look looks like a like a, like a cheese then like like the order book is not really deep and, and and not really broad in this context so you might very interested might be very very interested into um, um here the the strategies which which you um, um 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 usually see being used from from HST, hfts in this context and uh so in this context um, there's some rebate trading, there is momentum trading, ignition trading, and there's also so-called statistical arbitrage. Especially the last one, we um, made this a topic in an earlier webinar. So just check out the, the YouTube channel from, from Admirals here. Um, we had this on, on, on rebate, uh, I'm sorry, statistical arbitrage. Um, I think we probably called it um, not that academic, but, but we called it um, pairs trading, but it's the same technique in this context. We will look into this, what I, what I mean by that um, in a few seconds. Let's first of all, start with rebate trading. Um, you probably have um, um, wondered why there are so many stock exchanges, especially uh, in the US. So it's, it's just that it's not just the NYSE or the NASDAQ, but you have also um, um, several other liquidity liquidity providers in this contact or liquidity provides exchanges where you can execute your orders and you have probably wondered why is that and um, the reason for that is the main reason for that is really rebate trading so what what we get to see in this um, um stra strategy here is that hft so high frequency um, um, um trading algorithms they post rapidly buy and sell orders, and therefore they get paid here by the stock exchange or by the ECN, the electronic communication network. This is what we refer to when, when we talk especially about the NASDAQ here. So <clears throat> what in fact is the case here is that these um, techniques or the, the, the HFTs which, which use this technique here or work with the strategy, they don't focus on um, a capital gains in terms of um, um, a share rising in price or currency pair dropping. Uh, but it's um, um, here in this context, the, the target to make a market, deliver liquidity, get executed here quickly, um, and then based on the rebates, you get paid for, for from the exchange, um, which says, well, you get this and that cent or dosh, uh, dot zero zero one cent if you um, 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 deliver liquidity here at our stock exchange. Um, this is this is um, a business model which um, which is used here and a strategy which is used. The problem is that sometimes the orders are posted that quickly, as I already pointed out, that you don't can really you don't have really a chance to execute your order here um, 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 on the price you get to see here on the um, um, on, on on your on your screen. And um, so this is a way how how they operate, how they make money, um, but. As you can see here, it's on liquidity providing, which is not necessarily provided in this context. There's another way, um, which is a technique which has already um, been used in the late 80s, 70s, probably, um, which is just faster. Um, and this is what you get to see in the next slide. So you have the so-called momentum trading or the so-called momentum ignition. So what you get to see here is, um, especially due to this pinging technique, um, that HFTs, they, they look for temporary supply and demand imbalances, also prov provoking them. So like, um, as I pointed out, just pinging, 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 and, and, and see, okay, there's potentially um, um, a level which could trigger momentum in one or the other direction, but it's not a true move, but it's just stops being triggered. So it's no value buying, let's call it probably, um, thus provoking such a, such a push. And then what you what you what you do or what you get to see is that they automatically trade with the short term momentum here um, till this this equilibrium here. So the balance between supply and demand is restored again. So very similar to what you usually do once you um, 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 trade very short term only based on the order book and what we usually refer to as so called tape reading. And um, yeah, so the last thing, the last the last um, um, technique we 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 usually um, 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 C being used, especially uh, from, from, from HFTs is so-called statistical arbitrage. So um, what you do is, or what, what these HFTs do is in fact, they exploit pricing differentials here between correlated securities and markets, respectively stock exchanges sometimes, um, which is then perfectly um, um, explaining 
beside rebate trading, um, why we have this massive fragmentation here in regards to more and more stock exchanges, for example, in the US. Um, and um, so what, what then happens is that um, these HFTs, they try to profit from um, inefficiencies here in the marketplace um, and arbitrage um, and, 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 and try to, to, to arbitrate here between those two stock exchanges. And um, you can imagine that when, when I um, worked as a student, as a working student, and, and that was the first where, where I learned how to trade the markets, it was a stockbroker. Um, and we were located here over here in Berlin, in Germany. We have a small stock exchange. And there is also the big, bigger stock exchange in Frankfurt, for example. And just assume the following. So what happens here and what happens sometimes quite, uh, quite often, in fact, if you didn't know what you were doing, especially as a student and you were, you were learning in this context. So what happened was um, that you said, well, I'm willing to buy, let's say, Google at, well, back then, something like $50 or something like that. So I'm willing to buy Google at 50 And then you, you post your order. So you're the liquidity provider. You're the market maker. So you are the guy at the stock exchange. And then, boom, and you get executed. And you're just like looking there and just thinking, huh, what, what just did happen? Okay, cool. I bought, let's say, 1,000 Google for five, five, 50 bucks. That's great. Okay, that seems to be a good price. Um, you enter again you're um, willing to buy Google at 50 bucks and boom, <laughs> and you're getting executed once again. Now we have 2000 shares. And then you see the senior trader jumping over to you saying, stop that, stop that. And you're saying, well, what, what's wrong? I, I just bought Google here at 50. Yeah, great, you bought Google at 50. And now you can see that at another exchange, you can directly buy Google at 49.90 in Frankfurt, for example. And you're saying, why is that? Well, because of this and that news or because my pricing was wrong. So I, I was willing to buy um, 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 at, a, at, a, at a price which um, was just higher at what the market usually wants to buy for. And this is something uh, quick traders, um, at HFTs, for example, not necessarily back then. So that was mainly manually, but um, that, that's what they, what, they, um, um, what they used for their advantage. So they bought, or respectively, they sold for 50 and directly bought back the sold um, 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 shares, 1,000, um, they directly bought them back at 49.90 in Frankfurt, for example, and thus booking a profit like with snapping a finger of 100 bucks. So 10 cents on 1,000 shares and then doing that once again. And while I lost these 200 bucks. And this is exactly what, what this um, um, idea behind statistical arbitrage um, 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 is, is, is based on and what they do only quicker. So we did this with an, um, um, a click on a mouse back then, early 2000s. Um, in this case, so this is now happening with algorithms in this case. You can also see this, um, these, these, uh, um, 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 these moves here, this arbitrage happening when you trade stocks, which are also located um, to a certain percentage in, in the ETF, for example, like fungible stocks, um, and Pepsi, Coke, for example, but also um, 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 big ETFs here in this context where like say Microsoft or something has a, um, 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 a weight of 10% in the ETF, sees a quick move in a single stock, which is not um, um, directly reflected in the ETF. And here, so several ways of, of arbitrage um, um, taking place then, and, and these algorithms here using their algorithms and mathematical formulas to profit from that. So, Let's come back now to the momentum ignition part, respectively, how um, HFTs worked as human beings um, in the 1980s here in this context, and 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 um, um, yeah, how 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 that how that worked back then. So therefore, we have to first of all have a look at an order book here and see how pro traders, in fact, suck poor retail traders into trades which they don't want. So first of all, this is the, the, the order book. It's one snapshot. Um, um, this is just this, this one I found in, in Google. It's just for, for um, um, illustration purposes here. You have here on the left in green, you have the um, bits. These are the guys, the price they're willing to buy. So I think this, yeah, this is the DAX way, 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 way uh, in the past, DAX 30. Um, and, and here is the guy buying the DAX at 9,156, for example. And then you see here at 9157, um, um, you see uh, the guy who's willing to sell the DAX. So these are um, the, the offers here in this context. And then in your trading platform, you see 9,156 to 9,157. This is um, um, here the spread, respectively, the, the buyers, respectively, the seller, the bid 
and the offer. And then you can see here, um, the last price where, where um, 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 the trade was executed was at 9,156.50 in this context, so within the spread. So there was the try, um, um, there was, there was um, 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 the last trade was executed. And this is just a quick rough overview here. So we don't want to now dig, dig deeper into how the order book works, works and so on and so forth. But we want to answer the following question. So um, just for, for, for illustration purposes here, you have a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. And now we have the following question. You're wondering who is buying here, right? And, and why are you buying there? So, and this is a very interesting thing now. And this is um, in theory, what, what HFTs are using, very roughly speaking, but, but still a good way to understand that. If you, if you understand here this sequence and you understand how the order book works, you understand which psychology, especially HFTs are using and, and what they try to profit from. So, so you, you're probably wondering who's buying there and, and why is someone buying there? Because you see here, obviously there's a large extension there's a large extension on the on the upside, and most likely the risk reward for getting long here is getting very unattractive. So why should go uh, someone go long here in this in this um, um, area? Oh, by the way, let me just <laughs> I have to I have to um, I have to 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 to, to trail to trail my 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 stop here um, down to break even. So right now you're probably seeing uh, in your in your trading platform you're probably seeing. Uh, you're probably seeing here um, 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 the market selling off, and I'm, I'm currently short DAX, so I'm, I'm, I'm betting on on this week weekly close. So I could imagine DAX going to to 14 and probably lower than that. And I'm currently short, so I just had to 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 trail the stop. So um, again, coming back, who's buying there? Who's buying there? Why why should someone buy there? If the risk reward is this unfa unfavorable here in this context, why should someone buy there? Um, this is a definitely um, a very important question you you should ask yourself. And um, the answer can be found in the order book and the guys playing games there. So what will you see here is um, that here is lots of buyers. So here the, the green will, will be very, very thick and there will lots of buyers. At least um, this is the suggestion. So you will see lots of buyers here while there's not that many sellers. But what you will see is that you get lots of executions here without the price moving strongly in direction of this trend, so higher. And this is now where the question should be asked, who's, who's selling there? I mean, if, if the market is not stepping up, if, if there's no push higher, obviously there's someone willing to sell at this price without the market moving significantly higher, even though the order book is suggesting um, that there's lots of, of buying there. And this is what you get to see. So if you, if you see lots of, 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 of bits here um, or big bits, and you don't see lots of, of offers here, then you usually say, well, there's lots of buyers and not that many sellers or willing buyers. So why, why, why shouldn't we go higher? And the reason is um, because the market here is faking this potential on the upside. And these guys who, who sit here and are suggesting, well, I'm willing to buy here, they are not really willing to buy there, but these are the fake liquidity providers. These are the, the, the HFTs who will disappear immediately once they sold everything they wanted to sell here um, 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 at, this, at this elevated price. And this is usually then when you see um, the market then in this context here um, exhausting itself. So you see lots of prints, especially on the bid. Um, and there's lots of selling happening. And once the selling is fulfilled and there's no more need and there's no more material you want to sell, no more stocks, no more currency, X, Y, Z, whatever, no more crypto. Well, then you see here the bits disappearing and the market dropping and vice versa, by the way. So we, we have this here for the long side. And this is usually happening. The guys who are buying there in this area are those who are not very well informed, let's say. These are not the guys... Um, 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 who know what they're doing? They just look at the order book and they they are they are sucked into a long trade here, um, and 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 this is if you want to understand what HFTs are doing, they are playing games with you, and and they 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 try to suggest there is something which is not there. Lots of buyers, and they execute against and and hit the bid. If you know what to to look for and how to read the tape here in this context, this is an um, um, a good way to to profit from this. For example, so um, can be seen 
every day over and over again, especially um, 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 after hot news. That was something we could see, for example, in Netflix happening um, um, on, let me just think about it. I think, yeah, it was Wednesday. And then also on, on the Thursday, if you if you understand which are the levels to watch here in the pre-market especially where lots of volume was being executed this is a good way um then to to um, um enter against very profitable uh, respectively very favorable risk rewards you get to see there and then um yeah take it take it in fact from there um so but now the question is and this is um, um where we want to now dig into here the question is um so how can we how can we profit um, um, from this from this knowledge here? So so what what can we do with this? Um, and in this context, um, um, the question now is: Can I somehow use this knowledge in my trading? So first of all, if you understand how to read the tape, how to read an order book, this is one way to to start um, 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 very short term trading and scalping. But um, it's definitely worth here um, to keep in mind that a very negative effect here for retail traders is that you get erratic, not sustainable moves, even sometimes in very liquid markets, especially in FX, you see those, those spikes higher and lower and um, the resulting um, um, here of slippage. So not being executed at the price you see in the chart because you say, well, that could be um, um, that, 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 that was just a spike out. You think there was a buyer or a seller, whatever. Um, thus, you place your stop there because you think you're getting good execution at this price, and then you're getting slipped like three, five, ten points um, um, higher, lower, um, um, and thus paying on top of, of the of the price you already pay for, for the trade. So this is one way um, to look at this and then take this into account, especially when calculating your risk. Um, Again, this was the second point I made. Um, you're also facing here uh, the risk um, of, of higher cost when buying a stop, for example, using a volume weighted average price or something um, which from a broker, which is, which is um, um, then exploited from, from HFTs in this case. So manipulating the, the, the price, as I pointed out earlier. But um, we want to really focus here on um, the advantage. So it, it sounds like, well, costs are rising. It's small compared to the chances you have um, if you know how to exploit this yourself. So for example, um, I have now a short order in the market. So I have a stop. I know where I want to exit the market. But I know so also say, um, even though I don't know how much the market will run, hopefully it will run on the downside. So far, it looks promising, but still it could also reverse. But um, still, um, I am willing to, 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 to manage this trade manually, but still I place an order sometimes 10 R away. Um, um, so for example, right now, placing a take profit at 13,500 points in the DAX. So we are right now trading at, let's have a look here, 14,200, 700 points lower. Um, so you might say, well, why do I place my stop there? It's not often, but it happens sometimes that the market just sells off and there's this flash crash happening then. You're getting executed and this is what we call a fishing limit. So you try to fish the market um, um, in this context and, and thus profiting from these flash crashes if these momentum ignited trades happen and the market sees really a quick flush on the downside or quick pop on the upside. And um, this is something I'd recommend, I'd highly recommend. So it sounds like a no brainer sometimes, but um, if you're, especially if you're a manually trader and if especially you don't plan um, to, to, to work with take profits, but try to trail the stop based on an intraday swing trade you hold and, and don't really know where to execute and waiting for a change of character or break of trend line or lower highs, lower lows in case of a long trade and so on and so forth. Um, you don't really know how much the market will, will run in your favor, but I definitely recommend you place a take profits far away like a like, like moon price, ridiculously far away. Um, sometimes, it don't happen that often, but probably once every two, three years, you profit from um, these momentum ignited trades and then selling to such an HFT at a level where this guy just forgot that there's an, 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 that there was an, an order being placed from, him, from, from, from his end. So this is a technique um, um, I'd recommend in this context, working with these so-called fishing limits. And um, yeah, already this is something which brings us to uh, today's summary for the for the webinar. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I um, um, enjoyed um, preparing it for you. So, first of all, HFTs is complex algorithmic trading in which large numbers of orders are executed within most of the time milliseconds. In fact, you can't 
execute your orders as a retail trader. And you can't even blink as fast um, um, with your eyes as these guys are executing the, the, the orders, entering and exiting the market. And um, as I pointed out, some of the strategies which are used by the Flash Boys are rebate trading, momentum trading, so-called momentum ignition, and also statistical arbitrage. Um, again, I recommend, especially um, around statistical arbitrage, to check out the uh, YouTube channel from Admirals for the pairs trading um, webinar we held um, um, earlier. Um, and you will definitely find it and, and get a better idea of and how this works. And now then understand that this can also be executed quite quickly. And um, what retail traders, um, 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 when we're talking about retail traders and HFTs in this context, so they are mostly affected here by the more erratic market behavior and potentially also um, um, the increasing costs of trading in terms of slippage and or wider spread, which is also true for, for long-term investors in this case, which are in fact using discount brokers when buying, selling their investment products via WeWap or something like that. Um, but you can still try to profit from uh, time to time from these HFTs and their um, 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 behavior here by working with fishing limits. So especially today where lots of trading is automated and these flash crashes happen more often than once. And you see that in several markets, gold, especially commodities probably right now, um, working with these fishing limits. So entering a trade for whatever reason, planning to I don't know, trading the stop, intraday swing trade, whatever, uh, but still placing an order, take profit order far, 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 far away from your um, um, entry. Sometimes let's say 10 R or something, you're risking, you're risking, let's say $1 on stock XYZ and then place an order $10 higher or lower. Um, this is offering sometimes phenomenal moves. You, by the way, I, mean, I just I'm just remember there was one move um, overnight after hours that was um, in uh, Shopify, if I'm not mistaken. There was a crazy move, I think, on a Friday or some weeks ago. Um, so this was a perfect example on on um, how, such moves how they how they could um, um, occur. And if it was an HFT or if it was another market um, 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 participant having a fat finger, it doesn't really matter, but it's definitely a technique you should um, have in your repertoire to profit from these um, 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 exaggerated moves on the up or respectively on the downside and try to profit, profit from them somehow. Um, and that's it. So as I pointed out at the beginning, I wanted to share some contact details here from Admirals. If you want further information on the broker making all these webinars possible um, and uh, fully regulated. So that means we have to finish here the webinar today with a risk disclaimer. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you enjoyed the webinar. We talk again next week um, on Wednesday. We will learn something new on trading techniques in this case, how to use volatility the right way. Um, at least how I work with volatility in my trading and which techniques I use. And um, so I hope you enjoyed the webinar. I wish you a nice weekend and um, enjoy yourself. Talk to you soon. Really look forward to it. Happy trading. See you. Bye.